In case you missed out on major local and international news updates within the week, worry no more because we've got you covered. Join us every Sunday on Ogama TV for a complete highlight of important stories from Nigeria and around the world. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Ogama TV and on Instagram at Ogama TV One for more updates. Our website at www.ogamatv.com for full news reports. Hello and welcome to Top Stories on Ogama TV, reaching you live from the coal city in Ugo, Nigeria. This is where we bring you highlights of major events that trended within the week that you may have missed. And for this week's edition, we have quite a number of interesting stories for your viewing pleasure. To get full details of all our new stories, follow our social medias on Facebook at Ogama TV, on Instagram at Ogama TV One, on Twitter at Ogama TV. YouTube at Ogama TV. You can also visit our website at www.ogamatv.com. And just before we proceed, let's take a recap of what trended last week. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Top Stories on Ogama TV and I am your host Chidiogo Asuki. Well, let's begin with stories from Enugu. The Enugu State Governor, Barrister Peter Ndubisi Mba, has inaugurated the newly reconstituted Enugu State Judicial Service Commission, the Seven Men Advisory Council on Prerogative of Mercy. As the state's Attorney General, as the statutory chairman and Barrister Seth Mokuru as secretary inaugurating the members of the Judicial Service Commission at the Government House Enugu on Wednesday. Governor Mba said their responsibilities were essentially to ensure the welfare and oversee the employment of judicial officers, reminding them that the state needed a functional judicial system to attract investments. And Governors of Southeast under the umbrella of the Southeast Governors Forum met in Enugu on Tuesday with a resolve to meet with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to plead for the release of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namde Kano. They also planned to discuss other pressing issues that will be of interest to the region and the country with the President. The decision of the governors were contained in a communique read to the media by the chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum and Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Ozadema, after their meeting at the Lions Building Government House in Ogo. The chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, while reading the communique, said that the call to plead with the president for the release of the IPOB leader is to foster peace in the region. And the federal government's ongoing initiative to reduce tax burden and optimize revenue achieved a significant milestone on Tuesday with the government's approval to exempt businesses, manufacturers, and farmers from paying withholding tax. The chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform, Tyro Ayedele, discussed the new information via a post on his official X handle on Tuesday. Ayodele noted that the directive would serve as a way of reducing the tax burden on businesses. The government also plans to begin full enforcement of these policies by January 2025. And a bill seeking the creation of a city state in the Southeast Geopolitical Zone was read for the first time on the floor of the House of Representatives during plenary on Tuesday. The bill sponsored by five members of the House of Representatives seeks the proposed state to be created out of the present Abia, Anambra, Ebonyi, Enugu and Imo states. 
when created, a city state will have 11 local government areas drawn from the five states, with the capital to be located at Lok Bagta. And the Nigerian President Bola Ahmed Tinobu has inaugurated a Presidential Economic Coordinating Committee to turn around the economy in the shortest possible time. Going forward, the committee comprising key players in the private sector such as Chairman of the Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, Chairman of Hairs Holding, Tony Ilumelu, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, among others, are expected to inject over 2 trillion naira into the Nigerian economy. While inaugurating the committee at the presidential villa Abuja on Thursday, Tinubu gave a directive of the injection of specific funds of 250 billion naira for health and social welfare, 500 billion naira for energy and power, among other bolster measures. And the Nigerian House of Representatives has approved a bill in its second reading to grant all foreigners the right to obtain and use the national identification number name. The legislation, sponsored by Deputy Senate President Barao I. Gibran, aims to replace criminal penalties with administrative measures to ensure compliance with NIN requirements without imposing severe legal consequences. Senator Cyril Fasuyi presented the bill's general principles during the plenary section as Senator Barao Jubrin presided. And the Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company PLC has announced an upward review of the electricity tariff for Band A customers. The Acting Managing Director, IBEDC, Francis Agoha, stated that the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has approved the tariff increase from 206.80 kilowatts per hour to 209.50 kilowatts for users in the category. According to a public notice signed by Agoha on Wednesday, the tariff for band B, C, D, and E remains unchanged. And the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohaneze Indibo Youth Council Worldwide, has urged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to make history by ordering the release of the IPOB leader Mazi Namde Kano. This is also as it held the Southeast governors and the senators from the region over their recent move towards Kano's release. Also on Wednesday, 15 senators from the zone, led by Senator Enyinaya Abaribe, met with the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice and submitted a letter appealing to Mr. President to authorize Kano's freedom. And the Down Street Committee of the Nigerian Senate has stated that the three government-owned refineries in the country will begin full operation before January 2025. According to the Vice Chairman of the Committee, Senator Jide Ipisangwa, who is representing Ondo North Senatorial District, the retrofitting of the Kaduna, Wari and Potakot refineries was already at the completion stage. Ipisangwa, who also states, that the Dangote refinery in Lagos State will soon begin the refining of Petroleum Motor Spirit PMS, expressed the satisfaction of the committee during the on-the-spot assessment as an oversight function for the refineries. And in Bayasa State, a high court sitting in Yanagua has sentenced a 41-year-old Barinda Sinidam to 14 years imprisonment for raping and impregnating his own daughter. Bayasa State Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General Briar Dambo in the suit charged accused with the offense of rape, contrary to Section 1, Subsection 1 of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law of Bayasa State 2021. And that's it on this week's edition of Top Stories. To get full details of all our news stories, don't forget to follow our social media handles on Facebook at Ogama TV, on Instagram at Ogama TV One, on Twitter at Ogama TV, on YouTube at Ogama TV. You can also visit our website at www.ogamatv.com. 
My name is Chidiogo Asuke, your host. And until next week, bye for now. When you think of online TV and radio, broadcasting, media consultancy, event coverage, event management and planning, there's no better name than Ogama TV. But that's not all. We're also into photo studio and coverage, equipment rental, news blogging, fashion and pageantry. We are at number 5 at Stroke 21 Chime Avenue, beside Open Sheraton Restaurant, New Heaven, Enugu. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook at Ogama TV, Instagram at Ogama TV One, Twitter at Ogama TV, website www.ogamatv.com. You can also send us email at ogamatv at gmail.com. Ogama TV, your one-stop media solution.